I think everything's really solidified at that point. It's all laid out for this point on. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to play a little game here with you. Okay. Pressure or pause? Is there going to be pressure applied to a guy for his numbers? Or are we going to take a step back for a minute? And we're going to start off with Anthony Santander. All right. Let's, let's look at him. He's 5 for 29 right now. He homer in each of the first two games. Had an RBI single Sunday in Pittsburgh. Come on, he's playing every day. Put him in the middle of the order. I think he's fine. We can just kind of, what is it? It's pause? Pause. Hey, we're pausing. Take a pause. We're going to take a pause, take a breath. Okay, perfect. We're going to keep this in the outfield for now. So okay. Austin Hayes, still, he's been under the weather here and there a little bit, but what do you have? Pressure or pause? Yeah, 220 for 26, 0 for 19. I'm still pausing because, you know, he had the uh, kind of interrupted spring training. He was sick. He had a stomach bug. He's been ill. He was under the weather in Pittsburgh, and I think that's really hurting him. He's pressing right now. A lot of fans, if you check social media, which I don't I recommend, don't. <laughs> never, uh, are, are like really upset with him. Like, get rid of this guy. He was an all-star last year, right? Mm -hmm. He was a Gold Glove finalist and left. Let's tap the brakes, though. Let's pause. Let's take a breath. It's Austin Hayes. He should be fine. All right. And moving on to his companion, Cedric Mullins. What do you have on him? Four for 28, two for 20 since the second game of the season, making diving catches still in center field. It's still Cedric. He's speed lower in the order. He's not batting lead off and hurting him from that spot. I also expect him to be fine, so we'll pause on Cedric as well. All right, moving on to the infield, Gunnar Henderson. Now, now this was actually contested and not really paid attention to. That final double play, he tried to turn to prevent the walk-off. The runner going into second never slid. He had to throw around him trying to get it to Mountcastle and ultimately threw it away. But do you have pressure or pause for Gunnar? I mean, I think he's got to be released, right? It's, I mean, <laughs> That's the rules. Fun. It's Gunnar. I think it's like a, <laughs> a three for 26. It's going three for four on March 30th. Again, it's Gunnar. He's playing every day. He's leading off. He's going to bust out of this as well. It's just funny how these slumps kind of happen collectively. It's not one guy. It just seems to always be like a group thing, and then they bust out. Ramon Urias, another former gold Okay, lover. what? One for 17. But he's. I think he hits like 359 and 20. 20 games lifetime at Fenway. So you got to play him here until he gives you a reason not to. Look, I get it. If you want to make room for a certain infielder in AAA, maybe this is a guy that's got some pressure on him. We're still pausing for now. He's still a league average hitter. He gives you a, a, a better defense, third base, gold glove winner there, uh, plus defender. I, I don't think you give up on him this early. So we're pausing, but a little more pressure on him than the others we've talked about. Okay, and, and this is another one who might be creating a little pressure on Ramon Urias. But Jordan Westberg. Yeah, 6 for 31. Did have the walk-off home run. Has been playing every day. Not in the lineup today, but playing every single day. And again, you just keep running him out there. For now, certainly, we're pausing. Now, if this is a prolonged stretch where he's really struggling, then you could go ahead and swap him out for another infielder. I don't think we're anywhere close to doing that right now. Because you know what? We're nine games into the season, Melanie. That's only I think nine. that's the point we're making here. <laughs> All these opening days, you would, you would think that it's still one or two here. But uh, we take a look now, and some of the reason why we're hearing pressure right. is what Norfolk is doing. Even Double A Bowie, they open up with a 19-run game. Heston Kerstad gets player of the week. What are we looking at, though? The Bruins are in town tonight, and I know that they go through some line changes in hockey, <laughs> but what about for the Orioles? Yeah, I mean, Norfolk, what if it's 100 runs in nine games, which comes out to a lot of runs in nine games. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. And it's not like a veteran-laden team where they're getting all this production. It's like the five big prospects who are doing most of the damage. So, yes, we've talked about the line change. Bring up five, send out five. Now, I would obviously challenge you. It'd be a fun little game. How do you make room for those five? You could probably come up with a few. But let's say, you know, Kerstad, Kyle Stowers, for example, example, two left-handed hitting outfielders. And you have Colton Kowser here. So how are you making room for them? So, you know, Connor Norby has been playing the outfield because they're letting Jackson Holiday mainly play second. So where do you make room for him? Holiday may be a little bit easier to say, here's how we could do it. Uh, Kobe Mayo. Corner, infield, first, third. For now, you've got Westbrook playing a lot of third. You've got yeah. Mel Castle and O'Hearn at first. So there aren't obvious spots for them. So you just let them keep pounding it on the door. And eventually, you're going to have to figure this out. But also, they are playing the Charlotte Knights. And I don't want to be disrespectful, but I'm guessing the Charlotte Knights are not going to make a run for that AAA championship. They've uh, no. got to be pretty bad. And Brandon Hyde kind of hinted when he was talking about how impressive this output's been. He goes, of course, I don't know a lot about their opponent. I'm thinking, we get it between the lines. It's the Charlotte Knights, and they probably aren't very good. And for fans who have missed that, that is a White Sox affiliate. You can take a look at what's going on at their big league level right now, right. and that pretty much tells you all you need to know, really, about who's on their doorstep. It's not a lot of guys right now. Now, last but not least, Yanir Cano can come out in a save situation, but he was the setup guy for Bautista. You bring in Kimbrell, who's obviously a completely different beast, but, uh, you know, where do you put him right now? How do you feel about him being the setup man versus coming in for some closes? What do you do? Yeah, I mean, I mean, certainly he 
he's at his best when he is that dominant eighth inning guy, which worked out perfect with Felix Bautista in the ninth. Now they have Kimbrell, and when I talked to Cano in spring training, I wanted to get his reaction to that signing, whether he was a little disappointed thinking he was going to be the guy because he really was the primary closer without Bautista, and he's like, no, he's the guy. I'm not a closer. I'm a setup man. That's what he really likes to do, and that's how he became an all-star. But Kimbrell had pitched back-to-back -back days, wasn't available Sunday, and Cano had eight saves last year, but that was in 14 opportunities. I'm not saying the guy can't close, but he certainly has been at his best and not giving up multiple runs when he's coming earlier. I've got, was it, uh, 202 ERA lifetime in the seventh, 209 in the eighth, 593 in the ninth. So he's better in the seventh and eighth, and they do have other alternatives. I think Cano gets another opportunity if, if Kimbrell's not available. But you've got Coulomb, you've got Aiken are pitching very, very well. So they may just have to go with kind of that committee. That's interesting, too. Again, some lefties that are some options there. Orioles with endless options, though, as always, Roth. Thanks so much for sharing some of this Thanks. insight.